Okay, so in this presentation, we're actually gonna be talking about finding your own location versus location finder. Number two, we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be doing actually a live Q&A guys where you guys get to ask me directly what you wanna know. What do you wanna know? Personal, business, the future, investments. Hey, I know quite a bit, okay? I'm not only a big believer in your network is your net worth, but I'm a big believer in self-education. So I educate myself literally every day. Even if it's just for 30 minutes, I educate myself every single day, all right? And then we're gonna be talking about ATMs or BTMs. What's the better fit for you guys, okay? So we're, we're, you're gonna learn a lot on this one. Welcome to this weekly live. My name is Paul Alex. I'm founder of ATMtogether.com. And if you guys never heard of me, who is Paul Alex, okay? Well, that's me. <laughs> All right, guys. I used to be uh, six years in corporate America as a sales manager. I uh, started at the age of 21, went all the way to 26. Uh, at that time, I was in a very serious relationship for the past seven years, guys. Um, thought we were going to get married and all that jazz. And ultimately, we ended up parting ways. We ended up parting ways because we were both not happy with what we were doing in life. So before that happened, I actually got into law enforcement, guys. I got into law enforcement. I was the detective for whew, five out of the seven years. I was in seven, I was in uh, law enforcement for seven years. And those seven years, I'm going to tell you something, guys, completely changed my life. Completely changed my life. And the reason why I say that is because any of you guys ever feel so passionate about doing just a hobby or maybe your, your current career guys, that's the way I felt about law enforcement. The minute that you guys see me in that uniform on the left-hand side right there. Okay. Uh, with a little star guys, every time I put that uniform on, I would transform. I would transform and be like, you know what? I'm here for the people. I'm here to help people. I, they, they come to me to help. They see that, that blue uniform and automatically they're like Espinoza, like, what do I do? Espinosa, well, what about this? What Espinosa? Like people like really genuinely came to cops for advice over everything, guys. I remember even one time working overtime at Home Depot and somebody would ask me like, hey, um, do you know what type of power tool I should use? <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you guys something. I used to get the most unique questions as a law enforcement officer guys and that was that was a profession that fulfilled me and changed me to become a true leader not only in life but also as a serial full-time entrepreneur guys and this is where we're going to go trans transition into the story okay so essentially as you guys can see right there on the right hand side me wearing that that helmet uh the, the goggles and you know the little mic piece looking like i'm in call of duty um guys that, that's that's when I worked actually as a detective in our narcotic task force. And I went through some, some very serious cases with some of my closest friends that I worked with every single day and almost lost my life, but the life of my fellow coworkers, which dramatically changed my life guys. And I'll get deeper into that story later on. Okay. But what I can tell you is with entrepreneurs, some of the best entrepreneurs that I have seen, okay, some of the best entrepreneurs that I've actually been blessed to talk to, something in their life changes, whether it is they start a family, whether it is that they go ahead, they go through something traumatic, whether something in their life forces them against the wall and actually forces them to level up in life. It might be that you might, might have a great career right now, but there is something inside of you that is just calling you that's saying there needs to be a change. There needs to be more, right? I want more, but you don't know what it is. And you know what? Everybody around you might, might say like, Hey, you got it made. What more do you want? You know, what more do you want? I don't like what, what are you greedy? What are, do you think you're better than everybody? No, that's not what it is, guys. Everyone in life is different. And what I always tell everybody, if it's for you, it's for you. And that's the reality. No one else can judge you. No one can judge me. No one can judge um, uh, your, your, your next door neighbor. It doesn't matter. Everyone's different. So when it came down to it, something dramatically inside of me changed. And I was just like, you know what? I don't think I can 
do law enforcement for the next 25, 27 years, because that's how long I still had guys. I had 25 to 27 years left to retirement. Okay. And I told myself, I was like, man, at this stage of the game, and this is five years in at this stage of the game, I already suffered multiple back injuries. I went through so much trauma because of certain cases, certain situations I've been in. Um, man, my personal life was taking a hit. My, my personal life with my family was taking a hit because I'm a big family guy. I I'm a big, big, big family guy. I love my family to death right now. They're in California. I'm currently in Florida, but they know I'm down here because of where I'm going. They know I'm down here because of where I'm going. Okay, guys. So I had to make some moves to come down to Florida for the business, but overall for my why. Okay. And I'll get into my why in just a minute. But what I can tell you guys is the transition from basically a nine to fiver, having the mentality of being comfortable, going into a full time entrepreneur, which the big step, the first step is always the scariest, guys. The first step is always the scariest when it comes down to entrepreneurship. And I could tell you this because when I took the step where I was just like, you know what, I'm going to put my two weeks in law enforcement and step away and actually be a full-time entrepreneur and try to make this work. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. I've never done anything that actually put that much fear inside of me because most of us, we fear the unknown guys. We truly do. Okay. And how many of you guys actually like change? How many of you guys are a thrill seeker? That's something that I would like to know. Go ahead and engage with me, guys. Go ahead and just comment down in the comments below and see how many thrill seekers, how many guys we have out here that are ready to take that plunge into full-time entrepreneurship. I just want to know. I want to know where you're at, okay? So how did it all start? Well, it started towards my sixth year, guys. My sixth year, I invested into one ATM. Yes. <laughs> And it's funny because anytime I tell everybody this story, everybody's like, dude, you went from being a cop, not only a cop, but a detective, a detective on a narcotics task force where you were like raiding illegal operations. You were dealing with cartel members. You were in little planes doing surveillance. You were working undercover, cover, buying uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars of dope, um, risking your life, you know, confiscating uh, like literally assault rifles and taking very, very bad people to jail to shifting to ATMs. What am I missing here, Paul? And what I tell them, it's, it's not the fact that I chose ATM for a specific reason because it's safe or because, you know, that's, th that's where I want to stay at in life. No guys, ATMs is simply my vehicle. It's what broke my limiting beliefs that it is possible to make another source of income, either residual, semi-passive or passive. That's it. That's what I tell everyone. I tell them, look, I was already making good money. I was working 60 to 100 hour work weeks, guys, 60 to 100 hour work weeks for almost seven years. Okay. And didn't blink an eye. I was getting three hours of sleep a night. I was content. You know why? Because I was fulfilled doing the job. I was fulfilled in law enforcement. I was fulfilled to go out there and make a difference every day, even if it was a tiny difference. So at the end of the day, when I tell people, well, well, did, did you instantly become a millionaire off of ATMs? No guys, I didn't. I didn't become an instant millionaire. I already had built a sustainable, okay. A sustainable, nice little nest for myself because I worked hard majority of my life. That's the, that's the hard facts here, guys. I'm an average guy that just worked a little bit harder than everyone else. When people would count me out, when people would say you can't do it, when people would say you would never be a detective, when people say I would never be a cop, when people would say I would never make six figures, when people would say I would never be a homeowner, when people would say that I would be a failure in life, I went over those negative, you could say statements. I went over those barriers, which for a lot of us, it actually holds you as a prisoner guys. For a lot of us, once we hear something negative, we don't want to be judged. We don't want to tell folks what we're doing because we're shy of what they might think of. But what I can tell you is through every aspect of my life, 
every, you could say hater, every naysayer, every person that said I can't, I have proved them wrong. That is one thing I could tell you that is special about me. Okay. And when I say special, I don't mean it in a cocky manner, but no guys, I just know I can work hard. I know I will outwork majority of the people. If I get into a room, that's just my mentality. Okay, guys, it's a warrior's mentality. It's a winning mentality. And it's a winning mentality that every single one of you need to have if you don't have it already. But you're in the right room. Okay, you're in the right virtual room. Hopefully one day we will meet. Hopefully one day I will invite you to a conference that I probably set up in the next few months. And you're able to be in the same room with me and other winners because that's who I hang around with. I don't hang around with negative people. I don't hang around with the people that say they can't, or they say maybes, or they say, oh, I'll do it next year. Guys, life is happening now. The next five years is going to be here within one year. Let me repeat that one more time for you. The next five years will be here next year. That's how fast life happens, guys. We just started 2023. How many of you guys remember COVID? That was back in 2020, right? I didn't start this online venture, which we call ATM together or this Facebook group till COVID happened, guys. Imagine that. Imagine what you could have done if you would have taken the first step back when COVID happened. Flash forward now. How different would your life be? Take the opportunity to reach in deep, focus on what I'm about to tell you, because this might change your life, guys. All right. It changed mine for sure. So it all started with just a $5,000 investment, which is one ATM. And I'm going to break down exactly how I did it and how the vision that only I saw worked out. Let's go on to the live Q and a guys Q and a. Okay. Go ahead and ask me some questions guys. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and actually break down how you guys could go ahead and actually start your ATM business if you guys want to do this on your own, okay? So what you guys need to establish, location, EIN, business bank account. You need to find an ATM processing uh, network company and a supplier. So it's going to be a combo, okay? A company that has both, that's able to supply you with the actual ATM and that's actually able to supply you with the actual network, okay? So make sure you guys are actually going to comment your questions as well because I'm keeping an eye on that. So what I've used in the past, and I still used it for the past three to four <laughs> LLCs, guys. Hey, <laughs> Paul, why do you have so many LLCs? Guys, man, I, I, I wish we had a couple hours here. I, I, I would tell you what, <laughs> everything that I've been doing. But um, yeah, I've used the company Inkfile. Okay. And I'm not here to push him to get a commission or anything like that. No, we don't, we don't get any type of, um, uh, spiffs off of, you know, using them. They're actually a pretty decent company. They're a good company that, um, gets your paperwork very fast. And, uh, I know I always get this all the time where they're like, well, you could go on your state website. You could do all that. Just yes, you can. Yes, you can. You could do it for probably less money, of course, but time. I'm big, big, big on time, guys. So if you're on a hurry to actually get your LLC uh, and all that jazz, get your, uh, you know, uh, statement of information, um, everything that the bank needs in order to successfully open your business bank account, I recommend going to Inkfile. Pick the cheapest package they have. And then what you want to do is the only option that you want to pick is the delivery, the delivery fee. The delivery fee is usually about 50 bucks. For majority of the states, okay. For majority of the states, it's fifty bucks. But if you live, I don't know. I think it's it might have been Pennsylvania. They might charge you a little bit more just because it does take quite a bit of time to get your LLC from that state. So when you use Inkfile, don't opt in for any of the upsells, guys. They're gonna try to upsell you a ton, okay? Um, cost. Now the cost is gonna vary depending on what state you're at where I saw the lowest package guys, man, I even saw some states for five bucks, but it shouldn't cost you more than 50 bucks to go to their lowest package. It'll get you everything that you need. And then once you expedite it, it'll probably cost you around a hundred bucks or so. You guys can actually check it out right now while, while I'm talking on here. Your EIN, 
go to the irs.gov. You could do that for free. The only thing is you can't do it past 5 p.m., guys. And that's Pacific or Eastern, wherever you're at, because they lock down the website. So go during business hours on irs.gov and apply for your EN after you already have your LLC. So once you guys have those documents, you guys are going to almost be ready to rock. Okay. Now, due diligence on the business bank account, guys. California is very difficult to actually obtain a bank. It can still be done. I still get hit up from time to time, but it's like once in a blue moon that you'll be able to find a banker that actually approves your business bank account. And we always get asked this question. Well, Paul, why, why are banks being very difficult with actually opening a business bank account? The reason why is because number one, remember earlier when I was talking about how there's some course creators, uh, influences and all that jazz that were trying to make a quick buck online. They fed a lot of people wrong information saying that it's okay to open a business, uh, uh, to open a personal bank account and to link that to your ATM business. The reason why it's bad is because you have to be transparent with the bank because essentially it's conflict of interest with the bank regardless, guys. So you have to think about it like that. The banks are actually doing us a solid because we're independent ATM deployers. Essentially, we're taking away their business. So being transparent with the bank, letting them know like, hey, I'm opening a business bank account to collect commissions from my ATM. That's it. That's the one liner. I'm opening a business bank account to collect commissions from my ATM. That's all you need to tell them. They will make the decision ultimately if it's a yes or a no. It's not going to be depending on, you know, what you do. It's not going to be depending on, you know, um, going in there and saying like, well, uh, trying to articulate how the ATM business works. They don't care about that. They just need something to put on the documents and to send it up to their supervisor. And trust me, almost every bank nowadays, especially in the United States, they've been, they've gone through, through this with hundreds of people guys. So make sure that you just do it properly. Um, now what is the total cost? Okay. So that that's very vague. Do you mean the total cost to start your business? I'm actually going to go through that right now. So ink file, um, uh, it can range anywhere between a hundred to 300 bucks. Okay. Depending on what state you're at. Do not opt in for any of the upsells. The only thing that I would recommend using is the expedited delivery. Okay. Expedited delivery is usually 50 bucks. Uh, next business bank account, business bank accounts on a monthly basis will probably cost you around anywhere between I've seen $5. I've seen free $5 and I've seen up to $20. I wouldn't go above the $20 mark guys. There are multiple banks out there. I heard something even crazy the other day that somebody was saying they're trying to charge me $600. And I was just like, there's no way. I'd be like, bye, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting another bank account like automatically. So, um, from free to about 20 bucks a month to have that bank account guys. And you want it to be a business checking account. That's it to start off. Let's keep it easy. Just open one account. Okay. And the liner once again, cause I may not be saving the replay is that, Hey, I need to open a business checking account to collect my commissions from my ATM. The other thing. Paperwork. When you go into this uh, to get approved for the business bank account, they're going to ask you for your LLC, your EIN, and then they're also going to ask you for an ATM processing agreement, guys. The ATM processing agreement is something that you're going to get from, remember, the company that's going to supply you with the ATM and also has the ATM processing network. If you haven't made contact with a company yet, I recommend to get three bids from three different companies. Also, if you're looking for like, let's say a combo deal, if you're looking for a location and an ATM, your best bet is probably my company, ATM Together. We'll make it extremely easy. We'll break down everything. You'll actually talk to somebody in person and all that jazz, okay? If you're interested in that, go ahead and just comment ATM Together in the comments and I'll have somebody book you an informational call. We're not salesy. We're just going to break it down just like this, okay? 15 minutes tops. All right, so... Once you have the processing agreement, that's going to be basically the agreement that states that you're actually a legitimate ATM deployer. You're doing this for the purposes of a business. Then they're going to go ahead and approve your bank account. If you do not get approved on the first go around, it's okay, guys. It's not you. All right. It's normal. You have to get used to people telling you no in business. That's just the way it goes. Not everybody's going to go ahead and actually say, oh my God. 
So, okay, a couple questions. What are the threats to ATMs? What are the biggest ATMs security issues? Okay, a couple of security issues with ATMs. You want to be knowledgeable on placement. Placement is big, meaning that stay away from big windows, okay? Number one, you want to put it next to a wall that's accessible to people when they walk in, okay? Um, reason why, you use the wall for reinforcement in the event that somebody wants to, like, take it, take it out of the store. Okay. That doesn't need to be taken out of the store. The second thing is with ATMs is a security issue with loading the machine. I always tell people do your due diligence. Okay. Go in pairs. If you can, um, go in different times as well. I wouldn't advise anyone to tell the store owner, well, I'm going to be there at 6 AM to go load the cash ATM. You never know guys. Okay. This is coming from somebody who was in law enforcement that investigated almost every single case out there possible. I've seen many things. I've seen many things. And I can tell you flat out right now, do not tell anyone what time you're going there. That's a no, no. So you want to show up either early. I, I, I would actually leave it like that. Show up first thing before the store actually opens, show up 10 minutes before the store opens, knock on the door, let them know you're the ATM person, get in there, load up your cash, close the door and do your thing. That way you have just an ease of mind guys. Okay. Let's see, we got the cash delivery. You also, you also want to make sure that you conceal the cash as you're going to deliver the money. I see a lot of people, they like to wear the fancy AT, the ATM shirt, which is cool, raw, uh, like right on. If you're making content, if you're going to go ahead and actually do the marketing, like you're going to take nice pictures of yourself with your ATM polo, cool, do that. But when you're going to go deliver cash to your actual business, do not do that. You want to be like very low key. Okay. So I would recommend get different bags, change it up every time, change your look. Like when I used to go load up ATMs, like I would wear like a black hoodie guys. I wear a black hoodie and I would just be like super low key. No one. People thought I was just going into like liquor stores or like the business. They're like, Hey, who's that guy? And then, you know, underneath my hoodie, I did have my shirt. I'd be like, I'm the ATM guy. They'd be like, oh, okay. And then I'd zip it back up. Nobody will tell the difference. Um, those are the biggest key security issues with ATMs. Other than that, easy peasy. It takes a couple seconds to load the machine. Once you know what you're doing, the first go around, it's going to take a couple minutes. You're going to fumble your keys. You're going to be like, you know, uh, sort of scared, but it's just, it's just normal feeling. It's just like anything else, right? Anything new right? You get used to it. Okay, guys. Uh, let's see. I started with ATM together six months ago. I will never regret it. Awesome. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, what's the average you need to open a business account? So as far as money inside of the account, it depends on the bank, to be honest with you. I've opened bank accounts with like a hundred bucks. Okay. Um, typically if you're going to load up your own ATM with your own cash, if you don't have investors, which is fine, you could do it either or. Um, I would recommend starting off your, your bank account with two to three grand because that two to three grand is going to go inside your ATM anyways. So you can start off that, uh, to, to open the bank account and that should be sufficient. I haven't seen a bank account that requires more than that, unless you're a baller and you're trying to open a bank account that requires like a minimum of a hundred thousand dollars so you can avoid fees. So, uh, okay. Since you, uh, how do I start? Um, just comment ATM together <laughs> and you can literally start like that. Um, do ATMs ever make mistakes? Actually, the pretty cool part about this, okay? It's a computer. It's a super smart computer. So ATMs do not make mistakes. Who make the mistakes? Me. <laughs> People make the mistakes, okay? We get a lot of, um, and not it, this is not with a single ATM deployer because we have thousands, guys. We have a little bit over 3,000 ATM deployers nationwide now. Um, but we'll get messages like the store owner called me and they said that the customer's uh, card is declining the transaction. Okay. And this is just the, the basically like the thought process that I go through. Number one, I ask them, did they get a receipt? What does the receipt say? Because typically, to be honest with you, and this is not to throw shade on anybody or clients, but a lot of people automatically would think that something's wrong with the ATM. And 99% of the time, it's not the case, guys. 
Usually it's because the client is broke. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's because the client's broke. That's that particular client, the outliner, uh, doesn't have 20 bucks inside of their account. And then unless you, you've actually established your ATM to, uh, dispense $10, like I had, I had a dual cassette where it dispensed $10 and $20, then they're just shit out of luck. Right. Um, another thing is just, you will get a lot of people messing with the ATM, like kids, they'll put toothpicks in the card reader, which sucks. It's annoying. Um, but it's very easy to clean. So you would get more mechanical errors, which doesn't happen often, often guys, I'm telling you right now, it does not happen often. I think, um, when I first started, I would get a call every single quarter. Okay. So a quarter there's what, like four months every quarter of the year. So at the end of the day, guys, no, I'm sorry, three, three months, every quarter of the year. So I would probably get called four times. And then typically if you set it up right. Okay. Uh, with the owner, you let them know ahead of time when you set up your ATM. Hey, so if there's an emergency and I'm able to do it that day, I will be here, but there is a 24 hour wait time. Okay. From the time that you call. So just letting them know ahead of time, that way it's programmed into the merchant or the business owner's mind already. Okay. Paul did tell me that there is a 24 hour wait, but he will try. Okay. And it's all, all comes down to verbal judo guys, how well you articulate that, right? You want to be very verbal. It's your business. You want to leave a good impression. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, answer some more questions, guys. Is it okay to meet with the owner of the place of the place you're doing business with? Is it okay to meet with the owner of the place you're doing business with? Of course. Of course, if you're using location finder services, I get it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're finding the location for you, but yeah, you always want to do a face-to-face -face, man. I mean, that's, that's how you get number one, more referrals. That's how you get more business. That's how you build more rapport. That's also how you uh, gain the perishable skill of sales and learning how to be comfortable with talking to strangers at the end of the day, guys, society, especially with social media and computers. I mean, I got blessed to be honest with you that I didn't use social media until 2020 because almost every single person I have met that I have met through the internet, they're not as sociable as they are online. It's not a bad thing, but I, I just, it shocks me sometimes. I'm like, I act like how I act on, on camera, like in person, this is me. Like I'm, I'm, I could talk. Okay. Um, but for some other people, they have to put up the act and be like, oh yeah, you know, and they're just super introverted in person. It's crazy. So make sure you go out there, talk to as many people as possible. Um, gain that, that comfort of just being out there, putting yourself out there, talking about your business, talking about, you know, interests of other people. And then that's going to open more doors for you as well. Okay. I keep saying, uh, I keep seeing vape smoke shops are bad locations. Is there any truth to this? Tom, it really depends on the area. It really depends on the area. I can show you, I think we had a couple people reply back with their success on a couple of smoke shops out here in Miami as well. Um, it really depends on the location surrounding businesses. Go back to what I had said on the initial slides, as far as your market research, and then you'll be able to determine whether it's going to be good or bad. I'm going to answer the best question and then we're going to move on guys. Okay. Cause I know I'm, I'm running deep into this. Sorry. I missed the first part. I need to watch the next video. When are you having another one? Every Tuesday guys, should we be armed? If you're able to be armed, why not? <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide.